In this video, we're transforming my old camper van with the help of some truck bed liner. So to paint the van, I'm going to be using Raptor liner bed liner. Uh, the reason I'm going with that, one, it's a lot cheaper than trying to do a proper paint job. Uh, with the auto paint, but also seeing how the paint on my Subaru ended up after a year and a half, two years of driving through forest roads, through sagebrush, and all kinds of stuff, the paint just got trashed and uh, really scratched up. So, to try and put a really nice paint job on the van, which is bigger and wider than the Subaru, um, just to have it get scratched up didn't make a ton of sense to me. So for the color of the bed liner, I'm going to be, it's going to be the original GM light blue metallic that the van already is, but I'm gonna be adding a white stripe down the side, kind of reminiscent of the old square body Chevy trucks and things. I thought having that white two-tone stripe would kind of tie in the white roof and my newly repainted um, white wheels, just kind of bring it all together. Um, and I think it'll look all right. So let's go over a little bit of the supplies first. Uh, there's quite a lot and uh, for a project this big, now I'm not going to be doing the roof of the van because I already bedlined that um, with a roller and used a Durabac 18 smooth bed liner. So I'm not too worried about doing that again. Obviously, you're going to need some Raptor liner. I'm using the tintable Raptor liner since I'm going to be matching the color of the van. So I have 10 liters of this um, with hardener. If you order the kit, it comes with hardener. For the color match, I went to a Westco Auto Body uh, paint supplier. So they were able to get me the exact color code matched Chevy light blue. And when you go that route with uh, getting like a color matched paint, uh, Raptor liner calls for a urethane base coat without any binders added in. So when you go in, just tell them, hey, I'm tinting some bed liner and I need this color code and a urethane base coat with no binders added. They put it in a quart jug just because to make it easier for me, but uh, this is actually about a pint and a half for what I need. And this was about $70. For the white, I'm using these uh, three ounce bed liner tint bottles from Custom Shop. I got these on Amazon. I ordered um, five of them, but two of them showed up busted and leaking, but uh, I called the supplier and they're getting two more sent out to me. Also, if you're wondering about how, how much you'll need to cover things. So one of the four liter kits of Raptor liner will cover 125 square feet with two coats, um, according to that. So knowing that, um, I went ahead and just went all around the van took measurements down the sides, height, length, whatever, get the surface area of everything, and then went and measured all the windows, subtracted the window surface area from everything, and was able to total everything up to make sure that I had enough, and then come up with the number for how many liters I was gonna need. So it's just a time consuming process with a measuring tape and a lot of math. For preparation, I went ahead and picked up some of this uh, U-Pull Acid Etch Primer. I figured I'd go ahead and just use their brand of stuff. Uh, this is for if you sand back the paint and end up with bare metal, which uh, this paint on the van is pretty terrible and I already have bare spots of metal. So I'm sure I'll have more by the time I'm done sanding. So you'll go ahead and hit those bare metal spots with some Acid Etch Primer. For some of the weird, hard to sand areas where you might not quite get a really good key on the paint, say like around the drip rails and things, um, where you kind of have to do it by hand, you can go ahead and buy this U-Pull brand adhesion promoter. Uh, I got two cans of it because there's a lot of kind of awkward lines around the body of the van where sanding might be a little bit more difficult. A decent respirator. Um, this is definitely going to be a must for not only for the sanding but also the painting for the spraying. To measure out the um, the base coat, 
since so these little bottles come exactly in three ounces which is how much you need for one liter of the Raptor liner so you just open this add a hardener add the tint shake it and then spray it um, for the base coat obviously you have to measure and be precise so I went ahead and bought these this package of syringes um, so I can precisely measure out how much base coat I'll need and easily pour it in there. Uh, they do have a couple of options for spray guns. You can thin out the Raptor liner and shoot it with an HVLP gun. That's originally what I was going to do. Um, or you can get what's called the, the shoots gun, which is the basic gun that comes with the kit. Or you can use this, which is the Raptor very nozzle professional gun. This allows you to adjust the spray nozzle to get different textures. I don't want a super rough texture on the van. I want it somewhat smooth just because I don't really like the look of that super coarse bed liner. So I picked up this thing. This was about $75. And to go with that you'll need an a air pressure regulator and I went ahead and bought a water separator filter for that as well, which I just got from Harbor Freight. So for the actual bed liner, that's what you're gonna need. Obviously, you're gonna need a lot of masking tape, uh, a lot of paper, uh, plastic, and things like that. You do need to sand the, the paint first to get a, a key finish for the bed liner to stick to. So for that, I went to Harbor Freight and just got this uh, a random orbital sander. So with that sander, I went ahead and picked up a whole bunch of uh, these sanding pads. This is a 220 grit. That's a little bit finer than they call for, but I don't think Harbor Freight really had exactly what they were calling for. But I did get some rougher ones as well, so here's a 150. So today, I'm just going to get started on sanding some of the big areas. I don't want the van to be not drivable for a while because I'm still waiting for my two replacement bottles of white to show up. So I'm just going to start sanding kind of the worst areas, the hood and things like that, and then eventually start stripping things like the mirrors off. I'm going to need to take the bumpers off, the grill, uh, my solar and shore power plugs, and all that kind of fun stuff. Starting with the hood, I begin sanding out all the stone chips and peeling paint. The goal is to sand all those hard edges smooth until you can't even feel them with the tip of your finger. Moving back along the body, I begin removing all the trim pieces so that I can sand all the way into the nooks and crannies. Oh. Conveniently, I think I might have just got those two bottles. Perfect. Staying organized as you remove pieces will make your life way easier at the end. I like using sandwich bags to organize all the little screws and clips that I remove. If you're wondering about this dent on the fender, no I'm not going to fix it. For one, there's no real good access to the back side of it, and these fenders on these vans are actually welded on, and in order to get those welds out, I'd have to remove the windshield. So I'm just going to live with it. The whole sanding process is very time consuming. Just my first pass took me the better part of a whole day. After finishing my first pass of sanding, I rinse off the van so that I can get rid of all the sanding dust and see any spots that I missed. It's also a good idea to dry the van off with a towel so that any of the bare metal spots don't flash rust on me. 
and now it's time to tackle any of the shiny spots that I missed the first time around. Now I'm going to start masking off the windows. Now I can wipe down the surface of the van with mineral spirits to get it ready for priming. I ended up running out of the acid edge primer, so I picked up some rust oleum acid edge primer, which is what the darker spots are. Right after I finished priming, the weather took a turn for the worse. This $130 carport cover is going to serve as a temporary paint booth to protect the van from the weather. With the van now somewhat protected, I can wipe down the area that's going to be painted white with mineral spirits and get ready to spray. So we got the spray gun all set up. I have this adjusted to 80 PSI. That's higher than they recommend in the service manual, but looking at, there's a Facebook group for Raptor liner owners. I like the results people were getting at 80 PSI. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that and try and get a little bit of a finer texture than that really coarse kind of standard bed liner stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my first bottle here. We're going to be spraying the white stripe and then that's going to have to cure and then we have to mask off the uh, the white stripe and then in a few days come back and spray the blue so I'm a little nervous because this has been a big project like a month in the making of gathering all this stuff so uh, handily these 8 ounce containers come pre-measured the larger kit does not come in the little containers like this but so we're gonna take one bottle add one bottle of hardener one bottle of white shake it up attach it to the gun I'm gonna spray a test beat a test piece on a piece of wood make sure the texture is how I like it and then uh, go for it A shake. A couple shots of acetone will make sure the gun's perfectly clean from dust and debris before we start spraying. When I see the texture that I like, it's time to start spraying the van. My goal with the first coat is good coverage with an even consistent texture pattern. process goes a little smoother as you get a feel for it.
When the first coat's done, you'll let it flash off for an hour and then come back and do a second coat in exactly the same manner. In between bottles of Raptor, it's a good idea to shoot some acetone through the gun to keep it from clogging up. And about every third bottle, strip the gun apart completely for a deep clean. And here's what the finish looks like after two full coats. Now I just need to put the walls up on the car cover to protect the van while it dries and get ready for the third coat, which is going to be a light dusting. So for the next coat, or maybe two if I need to, or if I decide to shoot a second one after this, I'm going to be upping the pressure a little bit. I've been shooting at 80 psi, I'm going to up it to about 90 and stand a little farther back and randomly kind of haphazardly dust a coat on there. And what that's supposedly going to do is get rid of the tiger striping down the sides from putting on the, the smooth coats or the deliberate coats the second time so that when the sun hits the bed liner, you won't see those stripes. Idea being a nice dusted coat will uh, give you a nice matte or a nice even finish. All right, so after doing that last coat, the dust coat, I think I'm gonna call that good. Now I just gotta wait for three days so this stuff can fully cure, and then mask off my stripe, scuff the overspray, and then uh, spray the blue. So I'm really pleased with how the white stripe turned out. It's like exactly the texture I wanted so that there, there is some texture to it, so you get some of that protection, but uh, it's not ridiculously coarse. It's just how I wanted it. And unfortunately, I only, <laughs> and I only made one little mistake doing that dust coat to get rid of all the stripes. I, I must have paused a little too long on one spot on the driver's side, and I have like a softball sized, kind of a shiny spot in the finish, but um, I think I can learn to live with it. I wasn't gonna crack open a whole nother bottle just to try and touch up that one area. So we'll just live with it. So while I'm waiting for that layer to completely cure for three days, I figured I'd take today to strip apart my grill because it's faded and kind of gross looking and give it a quick spray of paint and just clean it up a little bit so that it doesn't look super dingy once it's bolted back onto the van. I'm hitting these two inserts for the grill with some acid etch primer because I'm going to be spraying them with the blue bed liner. The rest of the grill and the headlight covers are getting a coating of metallic gray that was the closest I could find to the original. Looking at these old Chevy badges, I decided to give them a splash of color since they're going to be stuck to the now white body panels. Once again, the little can of Color Match GM paint is coming in handy. Okay, so it's been now 72 hours. It's time to take the walls down on the car cover and double and triple check my masking job. Start masking off the lines for my white stripe 
and then sand and scuff the overspray and then spray and hope that the rain stays away. The forecast keeps changing like hour by hour. Today it's supposed to be just cloudy and dry and then I'm just gonna bundle up the uh, car cover as much as I can to protect it from the rain because it's supposed to rain for about the next five days. Okay, so this could be helpful info. So this is the tape I bought originally to use. I figured multi-surface, sharp lines, that sounds good for masking out my two-tone. This stuff doesn't stick where it just doesn't stick. Dude. So I went to AutoZone and got some proper automotive masking tape. I got this green stuff and this yellow poly tape. It's like a plasticky, waterproof kind of a masking tape. And I found that this works really well, kind of trying to maintain my body line around a corner, whereas this tape doesn't quite have that bend to follow the curvature quite so well, um, like flat-wise. This stuff, I'm able to, in short sections, maintain a nice even line uh, while kind of bending it up. So I'm using this for the corners, this for the straight lines, and it seems to be working a lot better. So skip this crap. Go for actual automotive stuff. With the body lines for my white stripe masked off, I can scuff the overspray so that the new layer of bed liner will stick to it. And another wipe down with mineral spirits to get rid of that sanding dust. And now I can hit all the difficult areas with some adhesion promoter. So I'm gonna shoot these two pieces for the grill first. They'll be kind of my test subjects for the color. And before I spray this, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a little bit of acetone through just to make sure there's no gunk in the gun. The process for the blue is going to be exactly the same as the white. I'll spray one even and deliberate coat for the first coat, wait an hour for it to dry, then spray a second coat exactly the same way, and then finish it off with a dust coat to even out the finish. Okay, last bottle, and I have run out of daylight, but I got some spotlights all set up. So, this is it. Whatever happens, happens. And yes, I did get too excited and forget to put on my respirator. Whoops. better or worse, that's it. My last bottle.
After waiting about an hour, I can remove the masking tape, and then it's a three day wait before I can start putting the van back together and see what I've done. Well, I'm really happy with the way the paint job turned out. The texture is exactly what I wanted, and it seems like it's going to be a really good tough coating for the van as I go on adventures. But while this video is uploading, we're actually going to be packing or actually on the road to the Gambler 500 where I'm going to be driving a stock Toyota Avalon on Oregon's backcountry discovery route. And uh, we'll see how that goes. If you like to follow along with the rest of our adventures, make sure to subscribe. And to make sure you don't miss out on any other videos, click the notification bell as well.